طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مرحبا بكم مجددا في الأمسية السابعة من ليالي رمضان على مسرح منبر مبادرة الباحثين السودانيين في محيط اعتصام القيادة العامة البرنامج بتاعنا اليوم إن شاء الله حيكون فيه نادي مخاطبة اللغة الإنجليزية وبشرفينا فيه الأساتذة والأستاذات الشفاتة والكنداكات مشكورين وهم اللي حيتناولوا الموضوع بتاعهم حنبدأ بفيديو تيك توك حول الهوس في اللغة الإنجليزية في 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 العالم كله وبعد كده إن شاء الله حنبدأ النادي بتاع المخاطبة بتاعنا Let's talk about ears. Let's start with Beatlemania. Hysterical teenagers crying, screaming, pandemonium. Sportsmania, deafening crowds, all for one idea. Get the ball in the net. Okay, religious mania. There's rapture, there's weeping, there's visions. Manias can be good, manias can be alarming, or manias can be deadly. The world has a new mania, a mania for learning English. Listen as Chinese students practice their English by screaming it. My life! How many people are trying to learn English worldwide? Two billion of them. In Latin America, in India, in Southeast Asia, and most of all in China. If you're a Chinese student, you start learning English in the third grade by law. That's why this year China will become the world's largest English-speaking country. Why English? In a single word, opportunity. Opportunity for a better life, a job, to be able to pay for school or put better food on the table. Imagine a student taking a giant test for three full days. Her score on this one test literally determines her future. She studies 12 hours a day for three years to prepare. 25% of her grade is based on English. It's called the Gao Cao, and 80 million high school Chinese students have already taken this grueling test. The intensity to learn English is almost unimaginable unless you witness it. Perfect. 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 I want to speak perfect English. mania good or bad? Is English a tsunami washing away other languages? Not likely. English is the world's second language. Your native language is your life, but with English you can become part of a wider conversation, a global conversation about global problems like climate change or poverty or hunger or disease. The world has other universal languages. 
Mathematics is the language of science. Music is the language of emotions. And now English is becoming the language of problem solving. Not because America is pushing it, but because the world is pulling it. So English mania is a turning point. Like the harnessing of electricity in our cities or the fall of the Berlin Wall, English represents hope for a better future. A future where the world has a common language to solve its common problems. Thank you very much. Having uh, said uh, that, well, uh, the video with each other, we're going to start with the leader of our leader, 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 with the leader of our leader. السلام عليكم رمضان كريم um, sorry but I'm going to speak English only you know why why because it is an English club initiation good um, a quick review of the things or the goals um, that we are standing here to achieve and to approach um, we have started this um, English club for many reasons right now we have a revolution in our country right um, we are we are determined in order to have a big change that is going to uplift ourselves and our country together right good so we want to help the country you want to help the country right good so helping the country is taking the name of your country and taking yourself on an international community when i say international community i mean people are not from the same root they are not descended to the same race not the same root and they are not speaking the same language and it is one of the good things that English language has accomplished internationally. Um, right now, if I have uh, a person from China, Chinese people. If I have um, a person from Spain, Italy, um, United Kingdom, UN, um, uh, Uganda, all of this diverse of, 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 of phrases and, and nationalities, all of them, their tongues are not the same. I mean that they don't speak the same language, right? Good. So universally, the English language has become an international language which combines all of those people together in order to communicate together. So we as Sudanese people are not less than uh, the United uh, or the English people. We are not less than the Spanish people. We are not less than the Italians. We are not then less than the Americans. We are a nation that all the world once in the history stood and clapped for. Right? So we are not less than them. Good. So we want to approach them. We want to be like them. We want to have a language in which that we are going to speak and communicate with them. And from this point of view came the idea of the English club. We are here today to learn the language, to learn the international language in order to be like them and to follow them. Good? So this is the main idea of our English club. We want to enhance the, the skills of English language by discussing many topics concerning the current situation in the country. Good. Is it clear? Good. Step by step. Step, step. step by step. Yes. yes. But I'm not going to be fluent like this. Even in do you know the stairs? You know the word stairs? Good. In a stair, you don't jump to the top. Good. If you want to climb a stair, you take the first step, 
the second step, the third step, then you reach the roof, right? So we step by step, step. and we are going, inshallah. Um, so I would like to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Raith Awad Al Karim. Uh, I'm an English teacher in uh, or at um, Idris International Schools and Vision uh, Center for English Language. But, um, I will let the mic for the other teachers to introduce themselves. Okay, guys. Good night. Uh, my name is Muhammad Al Ansari Hassan, and I'm a teacher at Steps International Schools. Uh, teacher. Okay, um, actually we would like to cut the chase and start our discussion for today. So the topic for today's discussion is, what does Sudan need to become a first world country? What does Sudan need to become a first world country? Uh, we'll, we'll try to fairly distribute the chances to all of the people here so that they can participate. So please, if you have anything to say, just let us see your hand. It's good. The first of all, in the name of Allah, the, the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. Peace be upon you, dear brothers and sisters. I really appreciate you in Sudan. So thanks. I hope Sudan, it will be the first country in all over the world. One day, inshallah, by the will of the God. My name is Bashir Ibrahim. I'm a student in Bahri University. I'm studying in College of Community Study and Rural Development. My allotted library and information science. I realize the topic, I appreciate the teacher that he will choose these words in order to distribute what we need. We really, the Sudan is need a real person that he needs Sudan to be in a, in a top. It's the person that he don't need to fill his stomach. It's the person that he need to fill the Sudan for words. Really, Sudan, it's good in anything. Have anything. Everything that in all over the world looking for Sudan. Why? Because it's a better country. Have a water that is no can other country have it. We know that. But according of the government that is passed, we are not able to do everything. The person that he is good, we are going to kill him. As we know that. The other country is saying that the difference between Africa and other, other continent is the person that in Sudan, we have a 10 person. All of them, they are smart. And one of them is stupid. And the other country have a 10 of them are stupid and one of them is smart. They are putting the one that is smart in the front of them and the other is going to be a leader. But we are in Sudan, put the stupid one and let the clever one to be us what we know. I don't want to speak this word. I really I want to say in Sudan that we need a good person. We need Sudanese. We don't need other things called religion, called uh, color, or something that is called personality. No, we need to be Sudanese just. I really this word that I want to say it for you. Say it and listen it for me. Sudan one day it's going to be the people will say that Sudan it is just is Sudan as it now. And now we we are seeing that. All the Sudanese have been seeing just now. In the past time there is something called color, religion, you are young, fat or something. But now it's just we are equal as in a religion. We know that there is different person. I hope America and European and Asia and Africa, Africa, all the people, Sudan, it will be the leader, inshallah, one day. I don't want to take a long time. And we need in Sudan to be one leader and all of us to be Sudanese in order just to make a Sudan forward. My name is Bashir Ibrahim and so thanks. And I hope that Sudan will be in the future. Please give him a harsh clap again. Harder than this. Come on. Uh, good. Um, so to the newcomers, um, our topic today for discussion is that what do we need in order to be a first leading country in the world? What do we need in order to be like America, in order to be like UK, Russia, and all of those countries? So if you want to participate, raise up your hand. 
Yes, welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Ramadan Kareem. My name is Anan or Anan. And I would like to thank this chance and those teachers for coming today. And we need firstly education. And education in in every state and here uh, everyone if you want if you, uh, in Sudan want to be educated you must come to Khartoum that's big fault must be the education in one level in every state in schools preschools universities everything must be in one level in every state okay and the other problem is must people let the other people problems must everyone solve his own problem so that we can become different country okay and right now sudan is one one of the top countries but no one know that because our re leaders our professionals our genius people lead other countries give me one country there is no one sudanese in the top in that country we need our leaders to come back. We need our professional, our geniuses to come back to Sudan to lead it and become one of the top. Right now is one of the top. Sudan is one of the top. We have the resources. We have the genius people. We have the leaders. We have everything. But where are, the, are the, all those? Everything we have is shared with other countries. We need it for ourselves. We need it to become one of the top. And we will. We are now in new generation, we will make it, we will do it, after 10 years, you will find Sudan in number one in the world, inshallah, thank you. So, good evening, uh, technocratically was he speaking, he, he said that we want the, the capable people to come again for Sudan, to help Sudan, to build Sudan. Uh, firstly, let me introduce myself uh, here, I'm Walid Othman. Uh, I'm an English teacher, by the way, and as well math. So, I work for Steps School as my teacher here, work in also, and my colleague here, Mr. Gais, also, uh, for Idris English Schools, and maybe I'm gonna have a other school for the coming days. Anyhow, um, my teacher here said that what does Sudan need to be a first country, the, the country that in the, in the leadership of other countries. So I said that he is my teacher and he is 26 years old, right? Or 25 years old, right? 25. And here I'm 31. He, he's younger than me. He became a teacher. He taught me firstly in the first step in my uh, institute. So how did he be become that? So he developed himself to learn other people that, he's, that they are older than him. So this is my point. So what the, uh, the country need is everyone should develop himself. When you develop yourself, so you will develop other people. So what is the, what is the country? The country is uh, consisting of people, right? So the people are living in a country. So imagine with me if everyone in the country is developed. So how would, we, how would the country be? So it would be a better place for living, for education, for health, for everything. So my point is develop yourself. When you develop yourself, you're going to develop your community. When your community is developed, you're going to develop your country. And this is the point, and this uh, the main concern should be developing yourself. So I'm going to let the chance for other people to, to have the speech. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Walid. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, really glad to be standing in front of you here. Uh, and uh, 
introducing myself. My name is uh, Abdul Latif Abidin Suleiman. Uh, I'm uh, studying at uh, Khartoum University as a student, Faculty of Art, Department of uh, English uh, and Russian as well. Uh, mostly, my friends uh, call me Lutfi. Uh, that's my nickname. Uh, according to the topic, uh, I would like to only uh, uh, cover uh, a few points. Uh, uh, firstly, I would like to talk about uh, uh, investing uh, the, the young generation. This will be the first point, okay? Because uh, really, uh, the, 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 the old and the, the old uh, generation, okay, uh, we consider them, you know, like uh, they are out of this stuff because uh, the coming generation will lead the Sudan and he has the right to, to make uh, Sudan a better place. So investing uh, young generation is by, like, you know, like uh, finding a suitable situation and environment for those young people who are now uh, from the age of uh, five to till the twelve, so in order to develop and uh, offer them uh, uh, education uh, and you know, like, a place that they can develop themselves, uh, and you know, like whenever like uh, we uh, develop and involve the, the education and you know, like uh, give those young people a chance to show themselves. This will grant us, you know, like a better, better chance and better opportunity, uh, you know, like, uh, that they can, you know, like uh, have a chance in order to lead our country. And a leader is most better than to be a boss. Uh, and secondly, I would like to talk about sustainable development. Okay, because really in, in Sudan we don't have this uh, uh, sustainable development. Uh, only, you know, like. Uh, those who are uh, uh, on the authority, they all see, uh, they only can condescend our uh, economic, uh, uh, all the institution uh, which is running by by them has been like uh, corrupt, and this really, uh, really, really weird. Okay, and uh, I'd like for those who are coming in the the, the next generation or the 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 the. the the generation uh, which uh, we are so in order to have this point of view that they have to be uh, open-minded uh, and well educated and uh, sophisticated and qualified enough in order to take place and put the, the, the right person in the right place and this will guarantee us uh, uh, a way that you know like we are going to have a sustainable development uh, in our country uh, and you know like it's not only by letting the, those who are in the uh, in the in the top to lead us, but we as uh, civilian, uh, you know, like we have the right, you know, in order, uh, to change uh, to change everything uh, that we see it is it, it, not suit our generation. So, for example, you are responsible, not not other one is responsible for you. You know, like, uh, if you find something uh, really really not good, uh, you don't have to. Uh, wait for someone else in order to change it. You have to change it yourself. If you can't change it with your, you know, like your words uh, or uh, with your advice, you know, like even try to change it with your heart. That will be a great deal. Uh, and eventually, I would like to thank uh, Sudanese Research uh, Association for this uh, really uh, such a, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, English clubs and. Uh, uh, I really thank them for uh, uh, my name is uh, Abdul Latif. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdul Latif. Uh, yes, the podium is yours. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. So, frankly, it has been so long since I spoke English, but when it comes to speaking about my country, here I have to do my best. So this is the best time to do our best, all of us as Sudanese people, and this is our responsibility to build our country in order to make it the best country in the entire world. So, uh, we are here to deliver a message for the entire world that we are the best nation ever, not only by demonstration or revolution, but that appears clearly here in sitting here in this place because we are sharing each other, we are helping each other and we care about each other. So this is a clear message for the entire world. I would like to speak about point that I guess this is the most important point that we have to discuss today that are we weak? Do we need other countries in order to be to help us? 
So actually we do not need any country to help us because we are a country which is full of resources. We have water, we have animal resources, and we have agri agriculture. So, but the thing that we have to care or concentrate about is how to manage these resources. And as you know that in the previous period that we were suffering about corruption. Why? Because the previous system or regime, they were corrupted. And that appeared in all organizations here in Sudan. So, the message that I want to send from this place is we are the strongest nation ever. We do not need any help from any country. We are able to build or rebuild our country again by investing these resources which we have on our plate nowadays. So, for the future, I want to concentrate on points which are related to the process or development for our country. The very thing that we have to care about is education, because if we concentrate on education, we are going to build better community by having the best generation ever. So right now, we sacrifice for sake of our children, for sake of our coming generation might die soon, might not get benefits from this revolution, but we are, what we are doing right now as all people here is to sacrifice, is to let our coming generation to have better situation in Sudan. So we will develop our country because who are we? We are champions. We are going to have the best curriculum ever because who are we? We are champions. We are going to do things in order to develop our country because who are we? We are champions. champions. So we are going to be best nation ever because who are we? We are champions. So we are going to have the best situation in the world because who are we? We are champions. So we are going to put better system in education, in health, and all these fields because who are we? We are champions. Thank you. Uh, and again, uh, the question appears. Who are we? We are the champions. Champions do not speak like this. Who are we? We are champions. Great. Yes, we are. So then, uh, your vision's point of view. Yes. So is yours. Uh, hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, how are you today? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for being here. Uh, before, before I start, I would like to introduce myself to you. Uh, my name is Abdul Manam Ali. Uh, I'm a, an English language teacher at University of Bahrain. So really, I'm so glad to be with, with you in this forum, Sudanese Researchers Foundation. So um, the question and the topic that we have is very clear, actually. So how Sudan can be a leading country. So since three decades ago, we suffered a lot. Suffered a lot from very dictator and brutal regime of al-Bashir. And now Bashir fell down. But it's still, its roots stick in Sudanese, uh, let's say, foundations. Uh, Sudanese, let's say, uh, uh, was in the health or education, they are still there. This is our, do our, our role, we can change this by trying to, you know, revolt against them. So by, by doing so that, this is the first step to change our country fo forward. Uh, but if we just uh, go back our homes and sleep like that, that means the system will be there. So we need to change this system, system of injustice, injustice everywhere in Sudan, whether this is in Darfur, Blue Nile, or South Kordofan states, or Northern province of Sudan, or Eastern Sudan, 
injustice is everywhere. There is social injustice. One of the problems that we have is social injustice. How we can solve this problem? So how Sudan can be a country that everywhere, everybody can live peacefully? So this is our dream. This dream can be achieved only if we are around here in this place. So we have three slogans. These three slogans are uh, peace, justice, and freedom. So peace, uh, as, as it is always said that, peace is not absence of war. Peace is inside of us. So how can I accept each other as Sudanese people? We have to have peace inside us. This is the first one. And then freedom. When we come to talk about uh, freedom, this is a very big term. We have to practice it. And instead of just theoretically talking about peace, we have to practice uh, freedom. So freedom of press, freedom of expressing your opinions, freedom of thoughts, freedom, freedom. So when we come to talk about freedom, it is very wide. We can't imagine it. So this is about freedom and peace. But what about justice? Let, let's say three decades ago that governed by Bashir regime, we had a lot of injustices. So that means justice should be upon everybody. So we should be the same. So everybody who commit crime should be held accountable. Accountability should be on everybody. Not, uh, for example, if somebody poor uh, does something does something bad, you held accountable and forget about somebody, somebody who is rich. We have to be like what? Like this hand, okay, fingers. So justice should be uh, on everybody. And one of the principles of uh, being a leading country is that there should be democracy. We need democracy here in this country. That means uh, a country of law and order. A country of law and order. A country of constitution. We need to have constitution. And I would like to say that one of the uh, things that said by Barack Obama, when he came to Africa for the first time, I think in, in Ghana, in the country of uh, West Africa, he said that Africa does not need strong men. Africa needs strong constitutions. So in Sudan here, we need strong constitutions. So how can we build a strong constitution? By being here, <coughs> by having awareness in our mind. So that's all what I want to say. So I would like to thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well said. Um, um, we are great, the Sudanese nation, right? And one of the great things that we revolted and, and, and we gained after this um, magnificent and heroic revolution is that we have changed an aspect that our ancestors had in their minds and it was very primitive. They used to say that Saud al Mar'a, Aura. But they have proven that the voice of women is not a thing that we should be ashamed of. Saud al Mar'a, Thawra. And they have proven this um, since the, 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 the revolution and the past four months. So right now, uh, we would love to have um, a feminine voice in order to speak and to share our, opi uh, our opinions uh, with. So, yes, miss? <laughs> the stage is yours. Clap hard. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. I'm Nihal uh, What does Sudan need to be the best country? I believe in education. So, if we need to build Sudan, everyone must be well educated. So, if you are well educated, you can give a lot to your country. Um, moreover, I believe in uh, that our differences and our different cultures is our strength. It's not our weakness. I believe in that. So we have to accept each other. We have to support each other. We have to believe in ourselves that no one is better than you. 
you have to believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you can build this country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Huh? Your people, opinions, faces, yes. Welcome. Clap hand, please. Assalamu alaikum. Um, 45 days I was in South Africa. And of course I listened. Soon it started to knock. And that's why I rushed and I came to eat this fruit. The fruit which is, which is mentioned by, met by Sudanese young generations. And the fruit which was being chasing maybe 30 years back. I don't know how to describe the situation itself because uh, I feel I'm Sudanese right now, particularly in this moment. I feel the Sudanese, I'm Sudanese. I know freedoms which we are looking for is not easy task, not overnight. But what I knew, we were to pay price. Our price goal is going to be well known among all nations. And by the way, what I give up, I have been disappointed while I was traveling. The country that describes Sweden is as they are paralyzed nations, they are no longer going to even achieve small goals. What I came back to knew that Sudanese start to say no. And of course, please, ladies and gentlemen, you are the one who's going to present this country. You are the one who's going to contribute positive. It's undebatable, of course, to speak about this issue. And things not going to change overnight and come and easy unless you pay price. I'm one of victim nations who has victimized maybe family that which is attacked by ex regimes, which we are called them dictators. And we, we, we never feel disappointed. Since we have you as young generation enlightening mind, we never feel disappointed at all. Because we have been expected change will come and the change already come approaching we're supposed to wait fruit of this change we're supposed not to let things because i know those ncb they're still around it's undebatable they're interfering even to discouraging but they have to know only one mechanism which is sudanese start to say this is our time. This is our time to achieve our goals. No more, no less. Please, my small advice. You, individual, or common. We have to speak about common interests, not to be individual interests. Remove the concept of, which is made by ex government tribe and races people come up with enlightened minds and of course those ex-government they are doubting our capacity our effort but right now of course they get shocked and surprised my surprise is young generation they defeat military through facebook and whatsapp and thank you thank you so much for your speech for magnificent speech so since we have a developing countries and developed countries um, I think so here should be a we have developing countries like Sudan Ethiopia and Saudi Arabia and those and we have developed countries like Britain uh, America and those so uh, so I'm gonna give the chance for the one a PhD a student the one who lives in UK uh, to tell us about how do they work how did they become great country so the mic is for mr Muhammad. please come over here thank you Sorry. i wasn't aware that i was going to speak um yeah sure uh so i was born in england so that's why i i want to keep my 
I want, yeah, sorry. I was born in England, so that's why I don't want to speak too much. I want the opportunity for other people to speak. Um, I guess just the thing that I would like to say about like how um, how England came to be how it is is uh, and the reason why people are expected to learn the English language. Uh, I, 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 to be honest with you, I, I think it's because of uh, violent processes of colonialism. You know, uh, so I think that we also have to understand the negative aspects as well, um, and we have to understand ourselves that when we're learning English, what we're trying to do also is not create a new class of educated people while the vast majority of people don't speak English. The solution should be to have those few people who may have the opportunity to learn English go out maybe, study in the big universities, but go there as someone who is taking what, what belongs to you because um, Britain reached its heights through theft and uh, only by using the language of the people who colonized you can you be able to undo the problems caused by colonialism. I know that that's sort of a more negative take on uh, the conversation about English, but it's my honest belief. Um, so I, I, I hope that people can learn the skills that they need from English, use that technical skill to snatch away the resources that were taken from you so that you can develop uh, and we can develop soon. That's my harsh opinion. <laughs> Thank you so much. When you go there, when you go to Britain, America, take what belongs to you. Be Sudanese. So let's hey, take the other chances. Yeah, you can have. Uh, so I, I seek protection from the devil of gods in the name of Allah, most gracious and most merciful. Uh, well, I praise you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the salutation the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and all his companions, his lips, and the found messenger. So, let it, uh, the first, let me to salute you with the solution of Islam. It's peace being open your town of the smiling peaceful. Uh, so, there, I'm very happy to stand in among of you and discuss about one of the great issues that is. So, uh, at the first, let me to uh, introduce myself to you. So, my name is Allah, Allah Sair. Uh, I come from the Western the Ford State. So, I'm gonna to tell, uh, to tell you something that what's the great thing that we, wa we wanted to, uh, to, to, to do in order to build our Sudan as uh, American, uh, American countries or uh, European countries and uh, other foreign uh, countries. So, I wanna, go, uh, I wanna say that the, the first is education. So, the, 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 the education it's the first one that can what can play a bigger role in this in this country in order to to build our country so uh for example I was now we are we are in the, in in the in the in the in the middle of the of the of the building our our country uh, our country so as we are know that this this place uh, it's gonna to what to build our uh, to capacity our what's uh, capacity building uh, our, uh, our 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 ideas our our uh, so so on so I, I'm, I'm also I'm gonna to say that uh, the, the the second thing that can uh, force or can can do on that is, uh, to what to avoid the uh, uh, the, 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 the great or the, the bad thing that as what discrimination as we know that in their form people in their form in their form and uh, in Jubal and Nova uh, uh, mountain, Nova mountain and, and so on in the Sudan have many uh, westerns uh, or have many states that are doing by the what's by discrimination so if you are avoid the discrimination we will what's going to uh, higher so um, the third thing that I want to say that is so uh, when we are going to uh, to build, so let us to uh, to respect our our idea each others and let us to what to put it our idea in one column in order to what to do our best. So uh, I'm going to say that for the people, this is our time. So for the young generation, this is our time. We are going to what to build. Our, our our new Sudan by own ideas now for the bigger people as uh, as, as generation of the Omar Bashir he the he's the Korokadai and even uh, uh, now now our our, our president he is the Korokadai but also we wanted to what to filling down this Korokadai to uh, the sir and thank you so much thank you uh, it means like yeah, by, yeah, they are Korokadai so it, is, it means like they lie us okay. So let us have the uh, other chance from um, talking about Mr. Muntasir. Uh, please come over here. Somebody's 
to reveal your opinion. Mr. Montesel, please come over here. Yeah. Okay, you Hi guys, how are you doing? Uh, first of all, thank you for giving me this chance. Such an honor actually cannot be described or even expressive. Uh -huh. Can you hear? Is it clear? Uh, actually, I don't know what I'm supposed to say, but uh, this unbelievable actually what is happening right now in Sudan and the remarkable amazing fascinating and astonishing message that we are delivered to the whole world I feel like right now we are uh, showing the others telling the others who we are as Sudanese because since the beginning uh, as a result of the colonization most of the African nations having had the chance to prove themselves which resulted in a problem that we somehow have which is the the problem in the self-esteem but what's happening right now the new generation all those amazing people actually who had started this revolution and all the beautiful things that is happening right now the only thing that I can say, how much proud am I for being Sudanese? Actually, it's amazing, unbelievable actually. Cannot be even described. And the second thing, before a few months, the only thing that I was working so hard to achieve and talk where is traveling out Sudan. Why? Because I, I believe that when I travel out of Sudan, I will have more chances with good jobs, good salary, and even my way of living would be amazing, actually. But when the revolution started, I, I felt like I realized one of the hiding, deepest part in my heart, which is how much I love this country. I didn't think like this before. And the only thing that I think about right now, instead of traveling out Sudan in order to have a better life, let us bring the people from out Sudan to the Sudan in order to have their better lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rest. Yes. Um, just a comment. Uh, the thing that Mr. Monte said, um, um, one of the terms that this revolution brought up um, um, amongst our, our chests is the term of patriotism. The act of patriotism is the act of loving your country. I firmly believe that five months from now or uh, back uh, then, five months, each single one of us would have one dream or the only dream that we had as an uh, as a generation is to travel outside the country to seek our personal life. Right now, we are seeking for a superior um, for a superior goal, which is developing our country. Right now, the patriotism or the love for the country is raising up uh, among us, and it is one of the blessings that I thank personally the God that I had right now. Oh, I have right now, sorry. Uh, the, the, the act of loving my country did not come just from me. I've learned how to love my country from the people that I'm seeing right now. And from the thoughts and the, from their good intentions for a uh, brighter future. Huh. Others, again, to recall the, uh, the topic, the topic is that um, Sudan or the new Sudan visions and thoughts. What are the, your visions and thoughts for uh, a new country? Yes, Mister, please clap for him. Uh, first, uh, excuse me, I want to have a seat. Uh, 
Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Sudanese Researchers Foundation um, to have this program, this um, discussion, because um, we want to make this sit in protest um, as much as possible, because let us not to forget why we are here. Because um, before these five months ago, nobody expected that one day we will be able to sit here in this place and have this open discussion. So we have to be, be very thankful for the great effort that has been done by you, by us, by those who, you know, sacrifice to make everything possible. But let us not forget that still things are not going in the right track that we are looking for. So this is why we are here. Um, I think uh, the, the title of the topic, why Sudan is not a leading country, why it's not considered as one of the first countries or one of the developed countries, um, I think according to the reason that we're here, I want just to talk about the political system because every country is ruled by the government and the responsibility of governments around the, you know, the, the countries or around the world is to lead countries. So once you have very strong government that run by constant um, constitution, it's a democratic government, you will make sure that things in your country will go in the right direction, just like you're gonna be able to have the sustainable development, whether it's the social development or economical development. Because when we look at the, our potentials, the thing that we have, the resources, um, I think a lot of countries that now we are looking for them as leading countries, they don't have even 50%, I mean 50% of what we have right now, but it's still because of uh, the government. I still consist to say the government, why? Because individuals don't run countries. So once there is a good, con I mean, a good government, when I say good, it means democratic, a civilian a government that we are looking for it right now. Once we have this, we will be able to have uh, good constitutions, good institutions even. Uh, but without this, and this is the, you know, the decade that we had it since uh, 1989, that we have been ruled by um, dictatorship government, um, that was corrupted government because when, the, when there is a corruption, everyone pay the what the, the, the consequence because within corruption, um, um, those who are qualified they don't have chance. Those who are having visions they don't have chance because within corrupted government, the opportunity is only for those who are with that regime, and this is the reason that you know obstacle us and the reason that why we are here right now. So. All of our effort right now is supposed to be toward having a civilian government. And some people may say that, why civilian government? Because um, when we have civilian government, we can guarantee that um, everything will go in the right direction. So this is it. Um, this is, I think, um, the only thing that I want to say it right now because the opportunity is going to be for someone else. A lot of things could be said, but it's enough for me right now. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, since we speak English, I, um, I, I'm going to just ask my teacher over there, Ms. Ansari, uh, you learned English. How you see, do you connect learning English with the de developing uh, your, your country? How, ca how can you just see, connect those two points? Uh, learning English with developing your country. Okay, thank you very, very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, actually, I don't have a lot of things to add but because the people who spoke before me actually uh, added a great value to the, to the thing that we're making here. Uh, uh, relating to your question, how can we link between English and the development of our country? Uh, simply, we need all the people in Sudan to be educated, right? Uh, one of the problems that face us, that face not only students but even researchers, is the ability to dig and get information because it's mainly written in English, right or not. You find a great difficulty in solving it or understanding it and this is, this is the real problem.
uh, how can we make Sudan a first world country? Uh, the answers were a lot. One of them was education, uh, getting rid of discrimination, uh, racism, tribalism, and all of these things. But the thing that I want to really highlight is that we need to be hard workers because as you can see, our revolution is not over yet, right? Yes, it needs more work. Uh, this reminds me of a thing that was said by our professors at university. Uh, he was uh, doing his PhD research at, uh, in Germany and his professor asked him, he said for him, uh, you're from Sudan, right? He said for him, yes. He said for him, how long does the football team okay, train uh, a day? For how long? Uh, our professor actually replied, he said, maybe they train for two or three hours. The German professor so confidently replied, he said, your country will never, never, ever qualify for the final World Cup. So why? Because they are not working hard enough. He said for him, do you know how, how long or how, I mean, consistently do we work here at Germany? Uh, actually, our professor didn't know. The German professor said for him, the football player here in Germany is like, uh, let's say, a, a guy who works in an office. He comes to the club early in the morning at 8 o'clock and he leaves at 5 or 6 o'clock. So how, how long is that for a work? It's very long, right? Yes. The thing that we know is that uh, all of us here are graduates or even postgraduates. We think that once we graduate, we'll find a job. Okay, straight away. Well, uh, it doesn't work like this. <coughs> Even outside, yes, the the ones who are very bl brilliant, they get jobs. But those who are not that good, they they struggle in order to find the job. Our problem here as Sudanese people is that we get easily distracted. Like uh, we focus on many uh, hoaxes on the social media, and we forget to work on the thing that really matters, which is ourselves. Let's say you want you want to study about something. You will try to open your Facebook account and see people commenting on a lot of things. You'll try to follow up and try to know what are they speaking about, right? Uh, this is our problem, guys. We need to keep only one target in our mind and try to reach it as hard as possible. Uh, for me, um, before this revolution, my only target was traveling outside. So, uh, as I've been working on this a great deal. Yes, but today, as we can see, uh, we didn't start only change for a political system. Actually, I don't know a great deal about politics. I don't even care about it. What we care about is the development of our country. Because if we take the greatest country in the world, United States of America, how many political parties do they have? The great ones, only two, right? Yes. So all of the country has only two political parties. Yet, it's one of the most developed countries. How did Japan develop? because they work on two things, work hard on education, right? So this is it. Here, we sadly have the resources, but they are not uh, invested in a perfect way. Uh, actually, this is all the time that we've got for today. Uh, we really enjoyed being with you here, and we really want to thank the Sudanese Researchers Foundation for this very healthy opportunity, really. Uh, I want you guys to clap for yourselves because you're uh, you're a part of this. So please, uh, our our discussion will start tomorrow at nine o'clock. So guys, try to be there. Uh, the topic for tomorrow will be patriotism and nationalism, and what what are the differences between them, and what do we really need in order to make our country a better country? Okay, uh, let me remind you again nationalism and patriotism and how and what do we need in order to make our country a better country thank you very much guys thank you.